Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Minecraft development tutorial series. Today, I'm going to be teaching you Discord integration. So, I'm going to be showing you how you can send a message, for example, on a command. If I give myself one cow, remember we created economy a couple of videos back. If I do that, then my bot on Discord is going to print a message to a Discord channel. Likewise, if I type in hello YouTube, it should print in the global channel as, as me as a player actually even using my own skin, which is really nice. And then if I reply as my own logged account, it should say reply in the game. And it's even going to tell me that the channel is global. Likewise, if I do it from, from the standard channel, it'll do the same telling me that the channel is, channel is called standard. So how did I do this? Well, the answer is a plugin called Discord SRV, which connects Minecraft to Discord and back. However, we are not interested in just using its default features. We as a developers want to take it one step further and fully customize it. So the way that I go about doing this is first of all, I want to grab the latest snapshot. I found typically this last update was in March. Uh, if you download the official version, so it might not support the latest Minecraft version. So I'm just going to go with the latest snapshot, download and install it on your in your plugins folder as any other plugin. And then next, what I like to do is I like to click on documentation right here. And first of all, what you need to do, you need to read the installation process right here. I'm not going to guide you through the installation process because the initial setup requires you to create the application, create the bot, confirm the bot, start it up and then create uh, and then configure the bot token, right? So this is here's a bunch of steps. Make sure to complete all of them in your own time. I'm just going to guide you through the most important one. If I open up my Discord, first of all, please disregard these old files. These are typically just done after you've upgraded your Discord version. If you don't have them, uh, don't worry. If you have them, you can just delete them. And then inside your config file, what you're going to see is the channel. So you want to have linked all channels that you want uh, us to work with in today's video. I just linked the global channel and the standard channel. If you don't know how to do that, open up your Discord user settings. And then I think under advanced, you should see developer mode. So enable that mode on your Discord, exit, and then you should be able to right click a channel and copy the channel ID, which is what you're going to be pasting right here. This works as a JSON array so that this is the name of your channel colon, its ID, comma, and then do the same for as many channels as you want to. You have to stay on one line though. So that's, that's one thing. Also, what I do recommend is in the debug section, you place in Minecraft to Discord, comma, Discord to Minecraft. It's just going to help you debug messages. For example, it's going to print all of these messages uh, when there is conversation back and forth between Minecraft and Discord. So you understand better what's going on underneath the plugin. Also, Discord, by the way, by default has chat synchronization and we want to make sure to disable set these two options to false because today's video will teach you how to take over this and just use your custom plugin to link your chat so that's one thing i'm just looking for what i wrote down in my notes when it comes to the home page i do think down below right here under developers there are installations on how to install this in your plugin if you're using maven please refer to the video about apis and libraries which we have as a part of this free development tutorial series on youtube so if you go a couple of videos back you should see this if you don't understand how to install this i'm not going to cover this uh just know that if the dependency right here is outdated what you can do you can actually visit the repository right here so you can go here and then you can just open up com and discord SRV. So let me just look for com. Discord is right here, discord SRV, and then open up the artifact ID, discord SRV, and then just look for what they have here. And you can see that we have uh, 126.2, but the latest one is actually 127.0. Snapshot. This is the one that we've downloaded right here. So what do you want to do in your IntelliJ when you're importing it? You just want to change this when you're importing. Uh, well, I completely forgot to import that actually. So let me just place it right here in the repository and then same for the dependency. And then you just want to change that to 1.27.0 that snapshot just like that without the ending dash and then hit reload and it should re-import this. 
So that's how you get it as a developer. Please, again, refer back to the video about APIs. I'll explain everything here on how to manage these APIs, libraries, and other plugins with your own plugin. So that's one thing. The other thing in your plugin.yaml, you need to add this to soft depend. Discord SRV is the name of the plugin that you're going to want to have there so that it makes sure that your plugin loads after the other plugin has been loaded. And then that's pretty much it. Let me just check the source code that I have prepared, right? And then what we're going to be doing, we're just going to be creating a new hook called Discord SRV hook. In this hook, we're going to be simply having an instance and then we can do a private Discord SRV constructor. That's right. And then you're going to want to have two methods to register. So what, how this will work, you have to open up Discord SRV API and then go to API and then call subscribe to this very instance. And then likewise, when it comes to unregistering, there we go. And now in your main plugins class, what we want to do is we want to find on enable method. We can just copy these lines, check in if uh, Discord SRV is enabled. In, in this case, we're just going to open up our hook and call the register method. Likewise, you can copy this, paste this in your own disable and then call unregister here. That's it. Now, when it comes to the actual events, how do you listen for events on Discord? Well, turns out there's a subscribe annotation. It's not event handler, so that's a bit confusing, but Discord has its, its own priorities, uh, its own uh, system to listen to events. And here you can listen to, say, on message received event. This is called Discord Guild Message Received Event. If you want to see all events related to Discord, just type in Discord event, and then IntelliJ is going to show you all of these which you can use. Now, in this event, what we can do, we can get the player name by opening the member, getting his effective name, then we can get the channel in the event, and then we can get the message. I think that's how it works. And then I can just broadcast this as a message. Right, and IntelliJ is actually very smart, so the AI has suggested uh, this formatting. I do like this formatting, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure to replace these colors with chat color um, alternative, and chat color actually provides a method called translate alternative color codes. So we're going to be going with this code. No, actually, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. You only have to do this if this code is something else. So let me just change this to something else, because I do think that when it comes to encoding this specific thing, I typically ran into issues a couple of years ago, I think they have been resolved now. But just for safety and simplicity, I do prefer the other symbol. All right, just like that. Now, if I go into the game, we can test it out. Great, so when the server loads, make sure it says found server in the console. And then it should give you a bunch of names of these channels, which are in your Discord. Now, if I type in in one of these channels, such as test, which is linked, it says Discord, Kangarco, in standard, and then it prints out the message. Now, it doesn't work back, right? It only works one way because we haven't implemented the other way. So the way we implement the other way is you can go in your chat listener right here, which we have made in the last video. You can implement it. However, I'm just going to implement it here in our Discord SRV class as a public static void sent message to a specific channel. And then we want to open up Discord SRV as a plugin. Then we want to call get destination text channel for game channel name. Super complicated, but that's just how it works. It's going to convert your channel name into Discord channel name. Make sure to check if this text channel is actually not null, right? Because it, sometimes it, it, it is null. However, if you've linked it correctly, it should not be null, but it's just a good practice to check it and then send the message. And then when you send the message done, you have to actually type in complete. Otherwise the operation will not be completed. So this is also what tricks people up all the time. Now, when it comes to, excuse me, when it comes to the channel listener, what we can do, we can simply call Discord SRV hook, send message to say the standard channel and then we would just want to send the message that this player has sent uh, this message. Let me reload. Let me show this too. Yeah, also make sure to use double brackets in Java. Spend too much time coding in PHP. Now in the game, if I type something, it should come across as a mind tester message. And then this is the formatting. However, you might want to send this as the player himself using something called webhook. So instead of doing this, what we can do, we can just call webhook util deliver message, and then it wants a text channel. So this is just the way you can do it. You can just copy this right here. And then the channel was called standard. 
So we're going to place the text channel right here. Then the, the, the player is the player itself, not, not his name. So you want to put the player himself right here. And then the actual message right here, just like that. Awesome. That's it. Now we've made a couple of adjustments to this in the last video. So what I can do is I can just copy so that you have variables support for these variables that can be replaced outside of the loop so that in your discord messages, um, you're actually able to, to see some placeholder APIs replaced in case you've seen the other video in this channel. That's, that's the only change that I'm going to make. Now, if I reload, you'll see the change. Okay. Back to the game, baby. If I type it now, it should actually deliver as me, including my own skin, which is really nice. And if I type in back, back to game without baby, it says back to game here. So that's how you do it. That's how you synchronize your chat. And in this first intro of this video, I also thought of you how to send a message on a command. However, this should make this should make complete sense if I open up any command that I have created during this free YouTube tutorial series, such as the take uh, sub command of the economy command, then here, if we given ourselves something, what you can do, you can just call discord SRV that send message. And then you can just say gave this much to this player, right? So this is what you've seen in the intro of this video. Just a quick addition, what happens when you remove Discord SRV from your plugins folder, how to make your plugin not crash. I simply created a private static Boolean, is Discord SRV hooked? And then down here, I inside the static constructor, I simply initialized it asking bucket if Discord SRV is present. And likewise, I ask, um, I created public static getter if it's present. And then when it comes to sending the message, I'll simply wrap it in here so that these classes are never called. These methods are never called if the API is not available. Likewise, in our chat listener, I simply go and I ask if we have hooked and only then we deliver to, to the webhook so that when I type something here and we don't have Discord installed, there is no console errors. If you enjoy this, make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like that. And if you want to learn more about creating your own micro plugins, we have a class called Project Orion. It is a full seven week online program. It's going to teach you everything about Java plus micro plugins, plus Discord bots and Bungie Cord plugins. And so it's very, very advanced. People have created mini games, anti-cheats, menus, animations, particles in it. And the best part is that I'm on there twice per week to give you personalized help. So if you guys get stuck and trust me, I got stuck when I was starting out a lot. So you have me twice per week. You can actually jump on a call with me live get one-on-one -on -one attention, share me your screen. And I'll be, I'll be like, dude, what the hell is this? I'll actually read your code and I help you patch it. And if you don't like the course after a whole 30 days, we can just refund you because we have a 30 day money back guarantee on it. So again, check the course out. If you need more help with this, cause I know chances are you will, if you will take your network to the next level. And if you enjoy this video, I encourage you again to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.